Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm gonna talk about the latest episode of Killing Eve. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Obviously, you know, it was an interesting, you know, start with uh, Eve, especially because that bus went by. It's like forget your grief, your worry, your grief, your regret. So it's like that's terrible timing. Obviously, she's at uh, Kenny's. I don't. It's. Uh, I guess it's kind of. Kind of a funeral, but it's not really the funeral. Uh, basically, uh, we get introduced to uh, Kenny's sister, which I don't remember them ever bringing up the fact that Carolyn had other kids. But, and maybe they did, and I'm just blanking on it. But I, she never gotten brought up until now. I think her name was like Geraldine, right? Um, that actress looks so familiar. I don't. I have to look into it. I feel like I know her from something, but I can't place what. Uh, but um, nevertheless... Eve is kind of there. She's a little drunk because she runs into this dude named Jamie who's kind of chastising her a little bit. Like, oh, he's like, oh, you'll be drunk by the end of the day or something like that. It's like, and she's kind of like getting a little drunk and a little aggressive at the funeral, kind of yelling at him. And she's like, it's 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 not me. I'm not drunk. He's just annoying. I, I'm not drunk. Having to constantly explain that, you know, and that's probably not a good time. You have to constantly be like, I'm not drunk. I promise you I'm not drunk. Um, and Carolyn, um, kind of reacted the way I thought she would, where she kind of, she is literally the only one at the funeral who is the most composed. I mean, I'd probably say next to that would be Constantine, because Constantine's like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you know, it's sad about what happened to Kenny, that Kenny's suicide, which is like, Eve is immediately like, oh, it's not suicide. It's like, it's like, oh, kind of saying like, this is what Kenny would want, but it's like, how would you know what Kenny would want? Because the fact of the matter is you are only ever after yourself. You only look after yourself. It's like, yeah, it seems like, I mean, now we know it's like, even when it seems like, oh, all you care about your family, it's like, you seem like you care, but at the same time, it is all about you doing what you want to do or rather you're told to do. Like, so it's always what's in his best interest type of situation. But, um, Carolyn is just, you know, kind of surrounded by people. You wouldn't think this day is what it is, you know, and Eve's just getting a little more, you know, drunk. At the funeral, uh, she's in the bathroom because she took Kenny's phone, and uh, Carolyn walks in, and Audrey's there, and apparently Audrey and uh, Kenny had a thing, and um, she doesn't know what to do with her, so she's in there, and uh uh, she sees Audrey just crying, and just like, she looks like so robotic, because she's like, I... I don't, what, what, what should I, I'm just going to leave. I, I love that. Like, she doesn't know what to do. It's like, like, like she kind of short circuits because she spent so long trying to like not, you know, keep her emotions in check and stuff like that. Hell, she tries to go to work, but it's like, nah, you need time off. Like the fact of the matter is your son just died. Like that's something you need time off. Like, you know, it's, it's a different situation if it was someone else that died, but it's her child, one of her children died. So it's like, it's going to hit you a little harder uh, than it would any, you know, because obviously uh, Carolyn goes to Eve and talks to her because it's like, oh no, I know that Kenny's death wasn't a suicide. I just have to like make it seem like, yeah, like I'm so got to keep it below, like, you know, under the radar that I'm investigating. And she goes to Eve for help because it's like, I got to show you something. And it shows Eve uh, the kill that Villanelle did last episode. And it's like, she's back. But Eve turns away from it because she knows, like, the shit show, the whole Villanelle thing put her down. I mean, Villanelle literally almost killed her. Uh, so it's like, she's not trying to go down that route again, especially with everything that's kind of going down. So it's like, I don't have to, you know, work with you, Carolyn, because I don't work for you anymore. So that's just kind of a complicated thing. And then we find out like, um, Kenny's boss was the dude that was harassing. Well, go we found out earlier that the dude that was harassing her at the funeral was, uh, Jamie. Uh, he's, um, actually, uh, Kenny's boss. And uh, he ends up texting the phone because he's like, oh, I know that you have Kenny's phone. But it turns out like the dude Bear was like, oh, no, we didn't actually know you had it. It was just kind of a guess. You were the last person that was with him and his body, his phone was a phone on his body. So, you know, just kind of straightforward. And so, OK, we'll help find out what is on that phone. But um uh, because, you know, we can't let you... Because, obviously, it's almost like you're not going to figure this stuff out by yourself. I think it's so interesting. I guess it's because, you know, what that place represents. It's a journalist place, so it's kind of like, okay, of course they're going to dive into the truth because they want to know. Because they feel like there's something suspicious about Kenny's death and stuff like that. So they want to look into it as well. But they're wondering, like, you know, what's Eve's involvement in all of this? Like, why she took the phone and everything? And, obviously... um, 
they look into the phone, a whole bunch of pictures of Kenny and Audrey, and it's like, oh, they were a thing. It's like, yeah, I love Jamie being like, oh, glad to know he got some before he died. And he was like, wait, what? I bust out laughing. He was like, you know, it's, it's good to know. It's like, I guess, I, I mean, that is, I guess someone's priority to be like, hey, at least, you know, they died happy having known that they, they got some or something. You know, it's, it's, it's such a weird situation. Uh, but uh, sadly, Eve doesn't want to stick around and deal with them just because I guess for her, it's a situation of like, because Jamie starts saying like, oh, the fact is if you, you there's some part of you that's almost trying to um, make it this, it, it for you, this needs to be more. It can't just be that Kenny killed himself, that he was just some unhappy kid. For you, it needs to be something more. Because uh, if it was something more, like, because that is what you're thinking, because if it wasn't something more, if it was something more, you why would you be kind of handling this on your own? Like, you're going to be the one that solves all of this. But, you know, Eve does, like, I think it's just they are kind of in the middle of probably they don't know for sure which way it is. So they want to find out the truth of the situation. But it's like, if you really believe there was more to Kenny's death, you would be here but it's just like, oh, you're trying to figure it out on your own must mean like you're there's still a part of you that thinks maybe he did just straight up kill himself, that he was just an unhappy kid. Um, I wonder because like they Jamie called Audrey in and Audrey ends up talking to Carolyn later on. So that makes me wonder, like, did they set that up or was that just kind of a thing of like, oh, like. Maybe Carolyn set that up of like, oh, no, I'm going to talk to you. But it's like, I mean, it's not like Audrey really pumped her for any information or anything like that. But it just it makes me wonder, you know, like I said, because Car- it, actually, it's actually kind of heartbreaking because Carolyn's in this very complicated position because she um, home dude uh, Mo finds her outside in her car with the music blasting. And he, she talks about the fact that he's like, are you going to come back inside? She's like, I, I can't. Because even if I go inside, I can't do my work because apparently I'm grieving, so I can't actually be here to work. But if I go home, my daughter's all over my case wanting me to talk. So it's like, what do I do? Like, for her, it's like, the thing is, she wants to investigate Kitty's death, but she can't. And it's something she can't let go either, so she's constantly, she's literally torn in this middle position of like because of everything in her life she can't really do anything sitting in her car listening to the music is the only thing she can do because she's even like i at least have my sandwich but you can tell like her eyes are tearing up and everything and even that's more than i expected to see out of carolyn which is like i mean obviously this situation is going to be a little different this is your son and everything but it's like the fact is that you even got that much was actually kind of a surprise to me like i you know like i said because she, you know, because she even talks about it, you know, to Audrey, she was like, I know I was kind of hard on him, but her, for her, it's like, yeah, like my parents, you know, always kind of gave me good encouragement and stuff like that. But it's just, I spent like four years trying to be an artist uh, with no talent. So it's actually kind of good to like, um, have someone basically kick, kick your ass from time to time, kind of, uh, be a little hard on you from time to time to kind of make you better. Cause even, um, she was like, yeah, Kenny said he kind of missed you kicking his ass a little bit, you know? Because obviously where things kind of stood with them when they died, when he died, like is what I brought up last episode of like, they weren't 100% on the best of terms. And I think she herself has a lot of regrets when it comes, like she purposely made her relationship the way it is with Kenny. I'm sure the same thing can be said about her daughter. She did it like that on purpose to, um, I think probably just, it was just kind of like her way to kind of compartmentalize everything, what she needed to do, plus being a mom and everything. Um, at the same time, there's a whole situation with Constantine. He's kind of uh, making moves and maneuvering because it seems like so. I was wondering if it was a separate group, but it seems like it's the 12. He's still been a part of the 12 this entire time. That That is who he was talking like, I guess, like texting about and stuff like that last episode. Maybe not unless there's some other group involved, but it seems like this is about the 12. And basically gets in there and it's like, oh, what's your name? He's like, Jeffrey. And they're like, okay, so what's your current situation? He's like, why don't you guys, why do you guys change up all the time? And the lady was like, we're in rotation. He's like, well, like, it'd be easier. It's like showing up to a different doctor every time, having to constantly explain what my issue is. It's like, can't you just read your notes or something? And so basically he was wondering if he could leave, but they want him to stick around because they want him to stay close to Carolyn to see what information she has. And um, because we see later on, Eve comes and visits Carolyn and tells her about like what Jamie had said that like, oh, um, there's that thumb drive that uh, the police have that has all the information like kid, all the stuff that Kitty was working on. I mean, obviously he was already working on a, a story, but we also know he was also investigating uh, like a last episode. What was it? Uh, Frank and uh, 
Fat Panda. So, like, he was still looking into all that stuff despite everything. So, it's going to be interesting to see whether... I, like, I was under the assumption it was all that, like, uh, MI6 stuff. Him looking up for, that was the cause of all of it. But maybe it was something else he was looking into. I, I'd assume... And it makes me wonder, in the grand scheme of things, was Constantine might not have been directly involved with it, but he might know about, like, what went down with, um, uh, went down with, um, Kenny. He might have been aware of it happening beforehand, or maybe he got the information afterwards. It's hard, you know, you never know 100% of what Constantine knows, but he makes a point to run into, um, Carolyn's daughter and gives her that magnet, but it turns out it's a listening device for he. So he, uh, it's in their house, and uh, he's basically getting information and listening in on them. So once again, Constantine's kind of doing his own thing. Um, on the other side of the episode, we have the whole situation with uh, Villanelle, which I think is interesting. Uh, which I love that they acknowledge the fact that Dasha was like, oh yeah, I appreciate, you know, it's like, oh, they were impressed with your last kill. Also, I appreciate the homage. She's like, yeah, better than the original. It's like, no, the original is always better. So that back and forth. But basically because Villanelle wants, you know, this is one step closer to the whole being a keeper thing. They want to put her in a management position because they want to see that, you know, for what she has, uh, the capabilities of being patient and responsibility, which she was like, I... I don't have either, which is like, oh yeah, you've kind of shown that you don't have either. But basically, it's like because as being a keeper, like you're a higher enough position and stuff like that. So they want to kind of test run her a little bit to see if she can kind of like lead someone else. So basically, she's going to have someone underneath her. His name is Felix. Um, she's like, what am I supposed to do? Just sit back? Like, why don't I? The kills are giving him. Why don't I just do it? Because I'm going to end up doing it better. And Dasha's kind of like, well, that's kind of the whole point. Having to watch someone do a job worse than you, but you got to give them encouragement. Like, oh, good job. That was great. Blah, 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 blah. Kind of, you know, make them feel better about themselves. Teach them kind of what, what and what not to do. And so she gets introduced to Felix and, um, and it's like, oh, like he breaks down all the people he killed. He's like, oh, my bully and bully's uh, favorite teacher and family and blah, blah, blah. And like at first, Bill and I was like, OK, who cares? Like, that's not special. And she's like, oh, she's impressed. But then she, he was like, yeah, they were all in one vehicle. So it makes it a little I think in the grand scheme of things, it, all those deaths makes it a little less impressive because it, it was all in one vehicle. But it was interesting uh, because Villanelle is just kind of annoyed by it. But like, all right, let me tell you the ground rules like. Uh, you do what I say, you don't do what I say, I'm going to kill you, got it? He's like, okay, I got it, you know, and kind of give him a little bit of a lay on the lands of how this whole thing works, because for him, he's like, oh, the best thing about this is to travel and stuff like that, is what he's looking forward to the most, she's like, that bully really messed you up, and what did he do? He beat up my boyfriend, and she's like, really, this is all about a boyfriend? It's like, he was like, yeah, but despite everything that he did, it just, it didn't work out in the end, and you know... And I like that they, because in part of me wonder, it's like, huh, was it just complete coincidence that you're both kind of going through a similar thing with an ex? Like he did so much for an ex-boyfriend, you did so much for an ex-girlfriend, that ex being Eve. And she kept trying to make Dasha believe like, oh, I, I've, I've moved on. I'm not worried about Eve because uh, Dasha is like, yeah, we can kind of blend in with them. But like the things that make them have the normal lives that they do, like the little small things like in relationships and stuff like that, that's something you can never go back to. Especially, but she She's like, I'm, I, I'm done with that. Like, I'm not, I don't even think about Eve when in actuality she does. Um, once again, whatever happened to the whole you getting married thing, I guess the engagement was just like, after the wedding was canceled, the engagement was off. I mean, is it really even an engagement at that point? Because you literally got married, so they null and voided it. I guess like we didn't cover like how the, I mean, maybe they did and I missed it, but like, I don't remember them covering anything about like what exactly went down. So I just, I just think that's interesting in the grand scheme of things. But um, nevertheless, um, it is a thing that, like going back to what I was saying, like Felix is like, oh, it, you know, uh, having a person you care about uh, not love you like you love them, it, it's worse than, he's like, I don't know what it's worse than, and she's like, shit, and he's like, yeah, shit's kind of the right word because it resonated. So part, of, but the point I was making is I didn't know whether that was just a coincidence or that the 12 put them together on purpose, but uh, they show up at the party, they're clowns and everything like that. And um, 
what was it? Like, I love that, you know, Villanelle uh, kind of was, you know, even as a clown, she was like, the kid's like, oh, I want two balloons. And she's like, life is shit. And the kid's like, oh, and she, and basically she was like, life is shit. Get over it. Get used to it, is what she said. Um, and when she was tracking down Felix, because Felix was going to go do to kill him, she's almost like, oh, it's taking too long. Went to go follow him. And as those kids were following her, she scared the shit out of him and was like, oh, that's creepy. Like, we don't already have enough creepy clowns with the whole, you know, Pennywise situation, which, you know, it was just interesting. And lo and behold, Felix didn't go about the kill the way he was supposed to. Like, he's like, oh, I'm improvising. And so Villanelle kills the dude a shot to the head and then kills Felix as well. And she's like, management is hard. So her, her trial run, uh, didn't go as well as she was probably hoping it would. And then lo and behold, who does she run into? None other than Constantine. I'm like, every time you piss her off, you end up managing to come back into her life. I mean, the last time you came back into her life, it's like, she was at least happy because she thought she killed you, but Hey, it turns out you're alive. So she was happy. Now she's pissed. Cause I mean, she did make a whole promise about killing you and your family. It's like, Oh, I hope it was worth it. And he was like, I oh, honestly, who knows if it actually was, you know, saving his family and everything. But he admits the fact is that, um, well, I also love the fact that she kicked him in the balls. At least it seemed like she kicked him in the balls. But he makes it seem like, oh, like I've never stopped working for the 12. So it's like, okay, so everything he did last season, the whole Rome situation working with Carolyn, that was actually part of his duties. Like, I guess he was supposed to sell Villanelle out. Uh, but then, like, I guess Villanelle kind of proved herself again. Like, I guess maybe the whole point was to kind of manipulate Villanelle into a into position she was in into killing Eve. Or at least, I don't know, maybe they needed... Maybe, whatever the case may be, maybe enough time passed that they're like, all right, we're going to give you another shot in the grand scheme of things. But it's just because, sadly, no one else can compare to you because you are really good at you do at what you do. So, fine. We'll cut you some slack. We'll, you know, because the last time we checked, they were going to try and track her down. I'm assuming they were going to kill her to kind of remove her from the situation. But the way things played out, maybe that just ultimately ended up changing their mind. But, um... Yeah, that means that everything Constantine's been doing the entirety of the series is, yeah, it's been slightly looking after his family, but more so than anything doing what the 12 has ordered him to do. So he's also made it clear to, he's like, and he drops a bomb on Villanelle being like, oh yeah, and uh, Eve is alive. Did not expect her to find out this soon. I thought it would have been a little bit later on, like their paths would have naturally crossed in, like while Eve's doing her thing and Villanelle does hers. I thought like it crossed paths like that. I mean, technically it does, but I mean, it's more so Constantine, which is like, okay. And it's like, oh yeah, she's alive. I've seen her firsthand. And it's like, she's like, yeah, but I shot her in the heart. It's like, well, for one, you shot Constantine in the heart. Well, almost in the heart. He's still kicking. But also it's like, you were so emotional about the situation. You were so angry. You didn't bother checking to see if she was actually dead. So here we are. And that, that look on Villanelle's face almost like, it's hard to say like 100% of what she's feeling. Like, is she excited? Because now it's like, oh, because remember, Eve actually felt a little relieved, I think, when she found out Villanova was still alive, just because, oh, I didn't kill her, and now it's like Villanova, I think it's like, oh my god, I didn't kill Eve, but it's like, are you excited about that because she didn't return to love, or are you looking at this as an opportunity to still kill her? I think it's kind of like the whole premise of the season, I think, is her finding out, oh, Eve's alive, and then trying to kill her again. I'm basing this 100% on, like, the little snippets of, like, promo commercials I've seen in this season prior to it airing because I haven't seen the full-blown trailer I've avoided it since you know because like, I only recently caught up with the show uh, but nevertheless I'm curious to kind of see what this new revelation means to her also what's this new what's her position going to look like are they going to give her another person like yeah try not to kill this other person that's um under you what's also interesting too is because it's like because Constantine was like, the fact is, you said that next time you saw Dasha, you're going to kill her because of what she did. I'm like, oh, what did Dasha do to you? Did she sell you out or something like Constantine? But, you know, essentially, uh, Villanelle was like, if I killed everyone who screwed me over, like, I would literally have no one, you know? So that that's uh, sad truth, you know, in the grand scheme of things. So I'm really interested to ultimately see where... All of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode because obviously it's going to be a race to get to Ken Kenny's data to find out like what it is that he discovered that he got killed over because obviously Constantine the Twelve in general now know about that and now that Villanelle knows it is alive like is she going to go come gunning for because I mean it's not like she knows exactly where she is Constantine has a better idea I mean to be fair Constantine saw her at Kenny's he doesn't know exactly where she is but. Because he's got um, Carolyn's place bugged, 
he can know and when the time comes. Like I said, it's just going to be interesting to see where all this ultimately ends up taking us. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.